Are you right now at the verge of giving up on life? Do you battle condemnation and feel inadequate? Is there a part of you that doubts whether God truly loves you? Would you like to better comprehend God's love for you? Life is full of uncertainties, but in God, there is an assurance of a beautiful future. Be inspired as you receive God's word that will stir up faith and confidence in the love that God has for you. Join us today on The Covenant Light. God provides. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. So why do I worry Welcome to the Covenant Light Breakthrough Hour. Go ahead, send times. out this links to as many people as you can. Every Join me in the comment section. Let me know God where you're joining provides. from and what your name is. God provides. Hallelujah. In ways I can't explain and can't deny. Good morning to you the too, my friend. What's the name? I have, he multiplies. Just when I feel he won't show up on time. God provides. <laughs> Chichi, nice to see you. He'll come through. Forget from Lagos. When the I celebrate you. Rain down on it did you. Me. I see you and I celebrate Get you again. Pastor Shano, I see you. you. Let's reach out to our people. Now you find Cheat you from Lagos. What God can do for you. So I see you. Dio from Lagos. China Zo, no I see you. Tony to I see fight. you. Uchena Lawrence from the UK, I see you. Watch God provide. Tayo from the US, Jeremiah Francis. God provide. Michael from UK. Ebera from Lagos. David. No food to eat. The barrister from Lagos, oh, Nigeria. I celebrate you. you. Like we'll be. Bola Chidi, and I see you. Esther from Lagos. Misery. Let's go ahead. Reach out to the people we sent the links out to, and the people will leave. Rosemary, I see you. Jane, Ola, and Ola Torera, I see you. Margaret, I see you. If you are ever faithful, I see you. Kechi, celebrate you. I will say from Winnipeg, I see and celebrate you. Peter, I see you. So tonight. Close your eyes, there's no more need to fight. Ooh, watch God provide. Yeah. Richard, I see you. Tina, I see you. Paula from Lagos. I celebrate you. Me, I see you. Close your eyes, there's no more need to fight. Sophie, nice to connect with you. What's God provide? Once again, follow up on the people you send the link to. Follow up on the people you need. If you're a pastor, if you're a mission out community leader, follow up on the people you send the link to. From my son, you here from Lagos. I see you. No more need to fight. Watch God provide. Glory be to Jesus. It's time for us to worship. And I want us to. There's this song by Steve Crown, You Are Great. Very popular song. I want us to just use that and worship God. For a few minutes before we begin to pray and listen to the word. You 
are great, yes, you are holy one. Walked upon the sea, raised that hand. Reign in majesty, mighty God. Everything written about you is great. You are great, yes, you are. Holy one, walked upon the sea, raised that hand. You reign in majesty, mighty. Everything written about you is great. You are great. You are great. You are great. You are great. Oh yeah. Say you are great. Say you are great. Everything.
kings and lord of lords oh so great you are doing marvelous things oh, everything written about you hallelujah glory be to god hallelujah blessed be the name of the lord go ahead wherever you are and just go ahead and worship him bless the lord get ready to receive from him get ready to receive from the lord this morning all that he has for us somebody say i receive everything that god has for me today oh hallelujah father we give you praise we give you glory and honor and adoration and we magnify you we magnify you blessed be your holy name this morning in Jesus mighty and precious name glory be to God i want you to go ahead and and say out loud boldly as we get ready for the word let me pray for us father i ask you for revelation knowledge to dawn upon our hearts let words and thoughts from heaven flow freely through me to your people let these words and thoughts continue to speak to us beyond today and let signs and wonders be done in the name of Jesus as your people hear in Jesus name amen i want you to say with me say in the name of Jesus heavenly father i pray that you will grant to me even now the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you that the eyes of my understanding be enlightened that i might know what is the hope of your calling and the riches of the glory of your inheritance in the saints and the exceeding greatness of your power towards us who believe according to the working of this power that was demonstrated in Christ Jesus when you raised him from the dead and set him at your right hand far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that is named thank you father i receive this dawn in jesus name amen hallelujah glory to god today i want to talk to you and i want you to get ready wherever you are begin to speak in other tongues pray in the spirit right now continue to pray in the spirit and i want you to be ready to receive you know as yesterday i said something to us tl osborn who was mightily used of god in signs and wonders and healings and miracles he said often times people while he's teaching people will say he will ask he will tell the people you're waiting for me to stop teaching so so you can start receiving miracles. He said, "Well, I'm waiting for you to start receiving so that I can stop teaching." While Peter yet spake, the Holy Ghost fell upon them that heard him. So I want you to be receiving, praying this be praying in the spirit right now as you are hearing the word of God. Be praying in the Holy Spirit. This morning we're going to break bread like we usually do. But before then I want us to I want to talk to us about giving, particularly about tithing. I have not always done a teaching on tithing because I grew up in the Christian faith and it was something assumed that we will tithe but there has come a lot of misunderstanding a lot of criticism of tithing with the ad- with the advent of social media that a lot of Christians have short changed themselves and no longer tithe Uh, 
Oh, hallelujah. I want to read us a story, a very powerful story about two men. One of them is William Colgate. William Colgate is the founder of the company that makes the popular toothpaste called Colgate. And he was a tither. Here is the story. The Colgate family fled from England and settled in America during the Civil War. Robert Colgate, William's father, was a farmer. William was interested in soap making and at the age of 19 he started his own enterprise with his aunts. I want you to think about that age of 19. That's like my son's age. So think of that age. He was already planning for his future and determining you know, what he wants to do. He started his own enterprise with his aunt's financial help. He produced soap under his own name but unfortunately, the business was a failure. Though William had to close down his initial business, he was determined to make a success of soap making. Encouragement came through the Bible and through a friend. In Genesis 28, verse 20 to 21, he read about Jacob who made a vow as he left his home. That scripture says, Then Jacob made a vow to the Lord, If you will be with me and protect me in the journey, I am making and give me food and clothing and if I return safely to my father's home then you will be my God and I will give you a tenth of everything you give me. William prayed the same prayer. His Christian friend had advised him, quote, start right and you will go well. Give your heart to Christ. Give God all that belongs to him. Make an honest soap and God will prosper you. William decided to honor God and give him first place in all his endeavors. He also decided that he would give one-tenth of his earnings to God. William started his new venture on Dutch Street and gave God the tenth from the very first earning he made. God was given the first place in his career and life. And as he had covenanted, that was the beginning of a business enterprise, William Colgate and Company, whose products have conquered the world's cosmetic market, its operations branched out from laundry soap manufacture into a host of other products within a short time. William kept his promise and he began to give more to God. From 10%, his giving gradually changed to 20%, then 30 and so on. The more he gave, the more he earned. I'll read you one more. This is by John D. Rockefeller. Now, Rockefeller... Is the first U.S. billionaire. The first U.S. billionaire once said in an interview, Yes, I tied, and I would like to tell you how it all came about. I had to begin work as a small boy to help support my mother. My first wages amounted to $1.50 per week. The first week after I went to work, I took the $1.50 home to my mother, and as she held the money in her lap, she explained to me that she would be happy if I would give a tenth of it to the Lord. I did, and from that week until this day, I have tithed every dollar God has entrusted to me. And I want to say, if I had not tithed the first dollar I made, I would not have tithed the first million dollars I made. Tell your readers to train their children to tithe and they will grow up to be faithful stewards of the Lord. 
He began tithing as a child and became one of the richest men in history by revolutionizing the oil industry. Notice that tithing was there, but he also had to prov provide a service. We talked about that yesterday. Provided a service. He came from a poor family and an absent father, but his mother taught him how to be faithful to the principle of sowing, which till this day brings the Rockefeller family prosperity. When he died in 1973, his fortune was calculated to be about $760 billion. Today, that will equal 12 times the wealth of Bill Gates. Um, William Colgate died in 1857. 1857, children of God. 1857. 1857. This is the 21st century. William Colgate died in the 19th century. Two centuries ago, over 200 years ago, he died. Not he was born, he died. And his company is still a leading company in the world, dominating in the world because of its foundations. America started as a nation and chose to be founded on God and things like tithing and all that was practiced nationally. And 200 plus years later, America is dominating the world. The, the one nation that began as a nation under God and when you go into their stories of those founding fathers, you find them talking about giving a, a, a tithe to God of their inflows and incomes. Another nation that began like that, the nation of Israel. Someone said Israel is a nation that God chose through Abraham. America is a nation that chose God through their founding fathers. So we see a pattern. I have experienced that personally in my own life. And I, I wanted to start this by talking about the experiences of those who have been radically consistent to tithing. And you notice the pattern for both of them. From that day to this, they have never stopped tithing. From that day to this. So there's a radical consistency about tithing that makes it effective. It's not haphazard. Not when it's convenient. Not when there is a preaching on tithing. You tithe for five, four weeks or five weeks and then you stop. A radical commitment and consistency in tithing. God told me this morning to talk only about tithing. And then we're going to praise him. We're going to bring the bread and wine and bring the tithes. All the... the the tithing heart, the commitment to tithe. So whether or not you've tithed before, it is that decision. William Colgate's life changed when he made the decision. Rockefeller's life changed as a child when he made that decision. From this day forward, everything that comes into my hand, whether it's one dollar or one million dollars, I will tithe it. His life changed from there. Your life will change from this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. You will enter into new levels from this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody receiving this with a resounding amen. You will enter into new levels from this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. You will step into things that God has planned for you, for you from this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not lag behind. You will not lag behind. You will not lag behind. I speak by the Spirit of God for those who will dare to receive it. You will not lag behind. You will bring forth your fruit in your seasons. Your story will be told like the story of William Colgate, like the story of Rockefeller. The years from now, if Jesus tar tarries, 100 years from now, 200 years from now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I speak these words over you. 
It will be told of you. People will pick up the internet. People will go on the internet. They will go on social media. They will go on whatever media is available at that time. And they will search for you. Someone will talk about Harriet. Someone will talk about Joyce. Someone will talk about Daisy. Someone will talk about you. They will research you. They will study how you succeeded. They will talk about tithing. They will talk about honoring God. You will tell stories of today. You will tell stories of what began here. You will tell stories. You will tell your own story. And say, I joined in a devotion. And there was a prophetic word. And I stood on that word. And from that day to this day, this has continued to happen. And those, that story will be read by generations after us. I speak this over your life. If you will dare to believe it, I speak it over your life. In a name, Poria Kateriamande, Remongeli Priya Galamante, Ne Kofranande Gezedelia, Ne Gronumbria Galamai. I speak to everyone under the sound of my voice. Every single person under the sound of my voice. I speak to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak to Olumide. I speak in the name of Jesus to Shanu. I speak in the name of Jesus. Whether I call your name or not, if you can hear me, I'm talking to you. If you can hear me, I'm speaking to your spirit. If you can hear me, these words will be over your life. And I speak the word of the Lord to me. In the third generation from your generation, you will be studied, you will be analyzed third generation i heard that clearly in my spirit he said in the third generation from your generation you will still be studied and analyzed in the name of jesus for the good that god has done to you for the good that god has done in you for the lifting that god has brought to you if you are in this meeting today you are blessed i did not plan this but god is doing something here maripa kashataya Marebogo zelia kranonde gesitamonda liko pra makete zelia gabro de gezelia le monje geli prate kaporiamande rikomba sakelia brataga make venum priaga la monsi kataya ma vezumbrega jatalia mande le vrenonde gesidia ba me ko frenonde your children will take over the world you know i plan to teach i had what i wanted to say and maybe we'll still say it. But the anointing of the Lord is upon me to speak over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, your children will take over the world. That which comes from you will take over the world. I dare you to note these things. I dare you to save these declarations. I dare you to hold on to it. I dare you to hold on to it. If I be a man of God. These things shall come to pass. Your children, your products, your products and services will take over the world. That which comes from you will take over the world. That which comes from you will fill the earth. God said to Adam, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, fill the earth, subdue it and have dominion. By the anointing that God is releasing here today, I speak and declare you are fruitful. You are multiplying. You are filling the earth with fruit. You are subduing and having dominion. And that which comes from you, that fruit that comes from you, shall multiply, shall fill the earth, shall subdue, and shall dominate in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 You are fruitful. You are fruitful. Every fruitlessness. Fr every fruitlessness. In the name of Jesus today. I destroy it. In your life. I set you free. From that unfruitful life. That unfruitful pattern. In the name of Jesus. You are fruitful. You are bringing forth your fruit. 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 That which you are in this world to cause to be, you are bringing it forth in the name of Jesus. That good, that service, that offspring, that which is meant 
to continue your name on earth. You are bringing it forth in the name of Jesus. Against every opposition. Against every contrary spirit. Against every contrary trend. You are bringing forth in the name of Jesus Christ. Folks, it's called the gift of faith. Jacob lifted his hand and spoke over his children. He spoke over Judah, over Reuben. He spoke over all his children. And the words of Jacob came to pass. By the gift of faith. By the gift of faith. He spoke over the children of Joseph. He said, the younger shall rule the older. And it came to pass. It came to pass. I hope you are receiving wherever you are right now. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. What an anointing just came in that in those few minutes. Glory to God. And it's still on me. It's still on me. Child of God, wherever you are, be speaking in tongues. Be speaking in tongues. Be speaking in tongues. This concept of tithing is a very powerful principle. And it's one of the steps of faith of Abraham. Abraham confessed the word. Abraham had a good or a service. He was a, he was a, a, a farmer. He was a farmer. So he had a channel through which God now began to bring things to him. But one of the steps of Abraham's faith was Abraham tithed. In Genesis chapter 14, as Abraham returned from the battle where he went to rescue his, his nephew Lot, in verse 18, then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of God most high. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of God most high, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be God most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And he gave him a tithe of all. Abraham did that. Now the king of Sodom said to Abraham, Give me the persons and take the goods for yourself. But Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have raised my hand to the Lord, God most high, the possessor of heaven and earth. Notice he quoted what Melchizedek quoted. He just, Melchizedek met him. Melchizedek said, Abraham of God most high, possessor of heaven and earth, blessed be God most high who has delivered your enemies into your hand. So Abraham, Mel, uh, immediately Melchizedek said that. The king of Sodom said, Abraham, you know what? You keep, the king of Sodom had, had Melchizedek say, possessor of heaven and earth. He said, you keep the goods, give me the people. And Abraham said, I have lifted my hand to God. When did he lift his hand to God? In the tithe. By making God his partner. By recognizing God. That's what the tithe does. The tithe is recognition of God's involvement. William Colgate said later on, talking about why he tithes, he said, I recognize that even the products, what I use to make this toothpaste, what I use to make the soap, came from him. Opportunities that I'm able to sell these things came from God. He said, but even the things I used to make it came from him. He's my partner. Abraham was saying, God is my partner. So my prosperity will be by that partnership. So, he said, I have lifted up my hand. I have raised my hand to the Lord, verse 22. God most high, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will take nothing from a tread to a sandal strap, that I will not take anything that is yours, lest you should say, 
I have made Abraham rich. When you are a tither, you will not look to men. Ah, the, the word of the Lord has come to me again this morning. Every area of your life where the arm of flesh has failed you, the arm of God will raise you. Every area of your life where the promises of men have not availed for you, from this morning, in that very area, by this declaration, just to show that God is greater, that very thing that the promises of men did not avail, did not work out. This morning, by the hand of God, that thing will work out. Supernaturally, God will provide his own sacrifice. God will provide his own people. God will raise up for you your hand in that very area. In the name of Jesus Christ. Watch what's going to begin to happen by that declaration. For all of you who receive it. Watch what's going to begin to happen. You will, some things will happen in your life. You're like, oh, this is what I, I was asking that man for. Jobs will come. Oh, this is what that uncle said he was going to help me do. But he, he couldn't. Some contracts will come in. Oh, this was what so and so person. But then he didn't. You will remember five years ago, this person said he will do this. Oh, ten years ago, this person said he will help me travel out. But he failed. And now you are out. That very thing that you have been promised by men and failed, God will show himself strong in that very area. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody be receiving with your amen. I have made Abraham rich. No. Except only, Abraham continued, what the young men have eaten and the portion of the men who went with me, let them take their portion. They don't have the covenant I have with God. They didn't tithe, but I tithe. It's interesting to me that Lot was in observing all of this. Lot was righteous like Abraham was righteous. Bible called Lot righteous Lot. But Lot was not a tither. Lot never raised up an altar to God. Abraham raised up four altars. Those days it was a big deal. It was like building a temple, a church to be going to. It was a way to show that I'm connecting to God to hear him and to talk to him. Lot didn't think it was necessary. Lot thought he prospered because he was skillful. Not knowing he drew from Abraham. And the moment he moved away from Abraham, he didn't know it was Abraham's altars and Abraham's titan that was providing and prospering all of them. The moment he pulled away from Abraham, he lost everything. First, because the king the, 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 of the raid that came and they were all carried away. And afterwards, the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, he lost everything. He left there with the cloth on his back from hero to zero in one day. Ended up sleeping with his daughters. It's a tragic end. To a man called righteous. A man called righteous. And then we find in the new covenant. We find in the new testament. Before even the new testament. In Genesis 28. We find Abraham. Genesis 28 verse 20 to 22. Then Jacob. Not Abraham. Now Jacob made a vow saying. If God be with me. And keep me in this way. That I am going and give me bread to eat and clothing to put on, so that I come back to my father's house in peace, in wholeness. Then the Lord shall be my God, and this stone which I have set as a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will surely give a tent to you. Can you see that pattern again? Set up an altar, give a tight. Bread and wine, tight. Set up an altar, give a tight. Build up that place of prayer, hearing from God, Talking to God and hearing from God, his word. Word and prayer, altar, tight. Word, prayer, tight. 
Abraham must have done it so consistently. I am convinced of the consistency of this. That Jacob didn't say, I will give you 20% or 1% or 5%. He said the same percentage that his father, his grandfather Abraham said was what he too said. Where did he see that? Obviously from his grandfather. Because he wasn't even there when Abraham gave this tithe to Melchizedek. So that was not the only time Abraham tithe. Abraham must have practiced it all the way to when Isaac was born. All the way till Isaac grew and Jacob must have seen it with his Jacob must have seen it with his own father Isaac. Seen it with his grandfather Abraham. Child of God. I want you to hear this. Make it consistent. In the new covenant, the Bible tells us, and we will begin to praise God now, in Hebrews chapter 7. From verse 4. Now consider how great this man was, talking about Melchizedek. Because the Bible now says Jesus is now our own Melchizedek. It's not the end of priesthood after Melchizedek. It's the change of priesthood. There was a change of priesthood from Melchizedek order to Aaronic order. Aaron under the old covenant. And then a change back to the Melchizedek order. The order of Melchizedek in Jesus. So Paul in the book of Hebrews was explaining that. He says, now consider how great this man was to whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of the spoils. If you are still there, say I'm still here. I know this is a very interesting, different meeting this morning. Type it in there and say I'm still here. And I hear you, pastor. Now consider how great this man was to whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of the spoils. And indeed, those who are of the sons of Levi, who received the priest, who received the priesthood, that's in the old covenant, the sons of Levi, the sons of Levi were the ones consecrated as priests. Aaron was of Levi. Those who receive the priesthood have a commandment to receive tithes of the people according to the law. That is from their brethren, though they have come from the loins of Abraham. But he whose genealogy is not derived from them received tithes from Abraham. He was talking about the change from Levi to Melchizedek. And blessed him who had the promises. And beyond all contradiction, the lesser is blessed by the better. Here, please hear this, mortal men receive tithes. But there, he receives, not received, receives them. So there is still a receiving of the tithes today. He receives them of whom it is witness that he lives. He lives still. Melchizedek is still living. But he's living now in Jesus. He's a type of Jesus. So there is still a receiving of the tithes going on in the new covenant. This morning, we are inaugurating something. And God told me to go a different route this morning. To share with you about the tithe. And get you into that space where you are committed to tithing. As a pattern, every dime that comes into your hand. If it is one Naira, one Kenyan shilling, one Ugandan shilling, one dollar, one pound, one euro, whatever it is, I will tithe it. I will, and I'm not going to decide what to do with the tithe. I will, because if you, if you make that decision, you've not given it to God. You don't make that decision. You bring it to where God said to bring it. And where did he say to bring it? To the storehouse. There is, we, we have no account of the giving of tithe to the poor. 
or giving of tithe to government or giving of tithe to schools. No, Abraham brought it to the priest. He brought it to God. He brought it to the church. We bring our tithes to the storehouse in the Mosaic Covenant. They brought it to the temple. And the Bible tells us that it is the storehouse you bring it to. The storehouse is where you go get your food from. It's where you store your food. Where is your spiritual food stored? Where are you? Where has God been feeding you from? That's where you take the tithe to. Where God has been feeding you from is where you take the tithe to. That place, church, where God has been feeding you spiritually from is where your tithe belongs. Whether it's an online, whether it is physical, where you get your food from is where you take your tithe to. So, what is it that is happening today? I want you to get ready. What is it that is happening today? Today is your inauguration into a permanent place of more than enough. A permanent place of more than enough. Today is your inauguration. We are rounding up this whole financial prosperity series today with an inauguration. The bread and the wine today we are bringing in a very different way. We are bringing it like Melchizedek brought bread and wine. You will respond by taking your tithe to your local assembly, to the church where you are fed from. You take your tithe there. You take your tithe there. And if you don't have a local assembly where you are fed from, if you don't have a church where you are fed from, you bring your tithe to the online gathering where you are fed from. But today, as you do this, it becomes your own Rocky Fella mom's lap story. It becomes your Colgate's experience when he went with his friend into a meeting and heard about Jacob. Your story will be told. You will say, oh, I have tithes at different times, you know, haphazardly. But on the 26th of May, I decided and began to tithe every dime And since that day to this, I have tithed. For those who will do that today, I am here to announce your inauguration. Lift your hands, everybody. Lift your hands. Now, I want you to go ahead, take the bread and the wine. And if you don't have bread and wine, it's okay. We are breaking bread together today. I have one here. I want you to take whatever represents that. Father, we come on the premise of the communion. And Lord, as Melchizedek, I see Jesus rising right now. I see Jesus elevated. I see you, Jesus. I see you, Jesus, and I honor you. In the name of Jesus, as Melchizedek brought the bread and wine, so today we lift up the cup Representing the blood of Jesus and the bread, the body of Jesus. Jesus, you were broken for our sakes that we might experience and have and walk in the fullness of all that God has for us. From this day, I announce the inauguration of everyone under the sound of my voice into a state of more than enough. More than enough. More than enough. More than enough. Myself inclusive. Our children inclusive. Our children's children inclusive. More than enough. 
more than enough overflow in abundance we inaugurate overflow in abundance our low points will still be more than enough our broke days will still be more than enough even when we are down it's still more than enough the ups will be more than enough and even the downs will still be at such a level that we are more than enough we will always have more than enough 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 somebody say it I step into more than enough more than enough more than I need I receive the wisdom of God I release the power of God and I experience the grace of God for more than enough in the name of Jesus. Say, I will always have more than enough. Say, today, I am a tither and I will always have more than enough. I will always have abundance. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Go ahead and partake of it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, as you go, like Abraham, like Jacob, like Isaac, as you go, like William Colgate, like Rockefeller, these people were not perfect. They were not perfect. They were not even preachers. It wasn't about their perfection, it was about a covenant that they stepped into their own part of that covenant and they allowed God to do his part. Notice Jacob's prayer. He said, if you will be with me and prosper me in all I do. I'm paraphrasing. So there must be something you are doing. We talked about that yesterday. Some say, I have tithes and that's it. No, there's something you must be doing. Don't let... don't, Don't burn daylight any day. Get busy doing something. Walk with your hand that which is good. Because this tithing now begins to walk on that. Jacob said, if you will be with me in what I'm doing, if you will get involved in what I'm doing and cause it to prosper, I will give this to you. So he, he wasn't expecting the giving to walk on its own. He expected that what he's doing, God will now get involved in that. Lift your hands, everyone, child of God. Begin to bless God. I have a word, one more word to declare over you. And get ready to receive and shout your amen. And take it. Whatever you are laying your hands upon to do now. Whatever you are laying your hands upon to do now. I prophesy multiplication to it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever you are laying your hands upon to do now. Will multiply will fill the earth, will subdue, and will dominate in its field in the name of Jesus Christ. It will dominate in its field. It will dominate the world in that field in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever you are meant to begin to do that you have not begun to do, by the wisdom of God, you will locate it You will discover it. 
you will do it in the name of Jesus Christ to the glory of his name. Lift your hands, raise your voice. Give him praise, somebody. Give him praise. 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 Kaliamanto ze prayer nangele broshte. Rekor Abrahaya. Give him praise, someone. It's an inauguration. 1997 November. I was inaugurated. <laughs> Since that day to this day, it has always been more than enough. More than enough. More than enough. More than enough. I took my tithe, my offering for the poor, my offering to my pastor, and my offering for that day at, in church. I took it at the same time to the altar. I turned back from that giving. And I knew. You just know. I knew in my spirit. I'm done with poverty. This poverty that has dogged my life. Since I was born. I knew I was done with it. I knew. Today you are done. With lack. Today you are done with just enough. Today you've been inaugurated into more than enough. It will chase you down. It will wear you out. It will catch up with you. It will overtake you. It will, you will swim in more than enough. Even when you say, oh, things are not doing, I'm not doing so well this week. I'm not doing so well this month. You are still having more than enough. I have those days too. There are still ups and downs. But in what bandwidth? Your ups and your downs must still be in the bandwidth of more than enough. Not, oh, I'm down. And I'm down means I have nothing. No, you will never see zero again. No, you will never see zero again. No, you will never see just enough again. No, you will never see not enough again. You are done with that. It's over. I'm a prophet of God. It's over. And all you've got to do is receive me. Receive me. Well, he that receives me, receives the one that sent me. <laughs> That's what your amen is. You are receiving the one who has been sent to you. Never again. Never again. The wisdom of God is released to you. Never again will you see just enough. Never again will you see not enough. Never again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you glory and honor and adoration. In Jesus' mighty and precious name. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's go ahead this morning and bring the offerings. Before the Lord. the details of how to give is the same as we've always done so under, under no compulsion it's been posted again under no compulsion please God loves a cheerful giver so if you are willing and cheerful in your giving today go ahead and do that go ahead and give and Father, as we give today, we declare boldly that it is given to us good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. Men, give to us. We have abundance and not lack in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, boy. All right, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. God just told me something now. I'm not going to say it immediately. Just told me what seed to be sowing going forward in our devotions. I've never given that at that level before. But that was how my life changed many years ago. 
And I will tell you this after the testimony starts flowing. But remember that I said now that on the 26th of May, God just spoke to me. I want you to step up what you give. And that's me personally now. I'm not talking to you. God just told me that. But I want you to note it. Because I'm going to share that testimony a month or two from now. And I'll tell you what happened from that instruction. Then I'll tell you what it was that God told me. Hallelujah. We have not followed cunningly devised fables. You see the joy in my voice right now. It's the excitement that God has just told me to give more. The excitement. Because I know what that means. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. If you're joining us and you've not given your life to Jesus, every talk of financial prosperity means nothing to you. Because even if you prosper financially, but Jesus said, what shall he profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Your soul needs to be saved. Who you are on the inside needs to be saved. God wants to save you. That's, that's the only time that financial prosperity becomes a blessing. Is when you yourself are already saved. So wherever you are, joining me from. If you would like to give your life to Jesus, just go ahead and pray with me right now. Say, dear Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and as my Savior. I believe in my heart that you died and rose again so that I can be free from the punishment of sin and the power of sin and the guilt of sin. Today, I surrender my life to you. Come into my heart. Live big in me and use me for your glory in Jesus' name. If you pray that prayer right now, you are saved. You're born again. Now, there's a new link that we created. It's a new believers group. It's a group, a new believers group that we created. And we want to start deliberately ministering to those who give their lives to Christ in these gatherings. So click on that group, that link. Our pastors are in that WhatsApp group. It's a WhatsApp group. Our pastors are already in that WhatsApp group, ready to connect with you, ready to receive you. We have someone waiting to just receive you. And we will get across materials that you need to help you grow. Click on that link and connect with us. And let's help you on your journey. If you pray that prayer and you give your life to Christ, you click on that link. And let's help you on your journey in Christ. Everyone else, thank you for joining in. Don't forget that next week is season 19.8. And so we are going to be having morning sessions. In the morning, we are going to be focusing on the word of the Lord for us for the year. And those things God told us to be doing. And in the evening, we are going to be have, talking about mission. So it will be morning and evening. Morning devotions like this and evening before we sleep. It's our day and night season. So go ahead and make plans. Clear your schedule in the evenings and plan to be part of those online meetings. And I celebrate all of you for being part of this all through this week. Glory be to God. So till I come your way again next week, Remember, you are loved by God. It's unconditional. And because of that love, you're experiencing his wisdom, his power, and his favor. Keep living in the consciousness of God's love for you. Have a wonderful weekend ahead of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.